All right, hello, 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 everyone. This is Mr. Vanderpool. Today we're going to talk about going um, from the short run to the long run. And we're going to be doing two different scenarios going from short run to long run on an ADAS graph. And this first scenario is excess aggregate demand. If we start off at full employment output and increase aggregate demand beyond full employment output. So I want to start off by differentiating between the short run and the long run. So remember that in the short run, wages and other input costs are sticky. Okay, They will not change. They will be slow to change in the short run. In the long run, wages and other input costs are completely flexible and they will change and you will see in these scenarios that short run aggregate supply is going to go ahead and adjust to that change in input costs. So let's go ahead and start with the short run here. So we're going to have um, a scenario where we start off um, at full employment output. So our aggregate demand is intersecting short run aggregate supply and we have an equilibrium uh, price level, P, and then our output is uh, YF. We're at full employment output there. And then we're going to have some sort of scenario where aggregate demand gets increased. Maybe there's an increase in government spending, increase in consumption, whatever it might be. So aggregate demand is shifting to the right from 80 to 81. Okay, and so there um, you can see we're at a new price level P1 and we're at an output um, of Y. So now let's go from the short run to the long run. So the short run is what we have already done. Okay, we have had that change in aggregate demand. Uh, aggregate demand is shifted to the right from 80 to 81. So in the short run, you have an increase in aggregate demand, which implies the rightward arrow next to aggregate demand means implies and throughout both of these short run to long run scenarios if you have a rightward arrow that means implies whereas the upward or downward arrows mean it's going up or it's going down now we have an increase in real GDP and an increase in the price level you can see that from our graph which implies that the unemployment rate is going to go down and the inflation rate is going to go up. Remember, the unemployment rate is going to go the opposite way of real GDP, and the inflation rate is going to go the same way as the price level. Okay, so that's what we have already done uh, in class, is the short run. Okay, we've um, shifted our aggregate demand curve to the right from 80 to 81. We can see real GDP went up, price level went up, un the unemployment rate went down, and the inflation rate went up. Okay, so all of this happened in the short run when wages and other input costs were sticky. Now we're going to go to the long run where wages and other input costs are flexible and short run aggregate supply is going to go ahead and react to um, the change in input costs in the long run. So here's how we're going to look at the long run. So in the long run, we start off with our increase in real GDP. Okay, that was from the short run. All right, and that drove down the unemployment rate. Okay, you can also see that from the short run. Okay, we now I've already talked about why that's the case. But if you have an increase in real GDP, that means there's more output, which means there's more employment, which means there's less unemployment. So the increase in real GDP is going to lower the unemployment rate. Now, since we're going to the long run, that change in unemployment is actually going to change wages and input costs. So let's go to that step. So now we're really hitting what's going on in the long run here. So that drop in unemployment implies that we're going to have an increase in wages. Okay, because there are not very many unemployed people, so they have a lot of leverage in the job market. Um, and they can actually ask for higher wages. So think about if you were a um, if you owned a business and you wanted to hire people, okay, and there were, was low unemployment, what would end up happening is you'd be looking for employees and there aren't too many employees out there because the unemployment rate is already very low. So to get employees to work for you, you're going to need to raise your wages. 
Okay, so the lowering of the unemployment rate means um, that there aren't many workers unemployed, so therefore that's going to bid up wages. And when that bids up wages, that's going to in, uh, increase input costs because wages are a major input cost for businesses. And after that happens, that's going to imply that you have a drop in your short-run aggregate supply. So, um, when you have a drop in short run aggregate supply, the short run aggregate supply curve is going to shift to the left. So we're going to go ahead and draw that. And we're going to go back to full employment output here. And we'll call that SRAS1. So we shifted the short run aggregate supply to the left, back to full employment output, and we have a new price level, which we'll call P2. And then we're back at full employment output. So one of the key things to notice here is that in the long run, you ended up with this scenario where you increased aggregate demand past full employment output. In the long run, you went back to full employment output. And so you're back to full employment output, but um, you have a higher price level. So all this... Uh, increase in aggregate demand did in the long run after wages and input costs adjusted is you just caused inflation. You went back to full employment output and then you had uh, you have inflation because the price level is going up. Okay, went up from P to P1 then went up again from P to P2. Okay, so once again, one more time with the long run, okay, we have the increase in real GDP Okay, that means more production, more employment, less unemployment. So when you raise the real GDP, you're going to look that implies that you have a lower unemployment rate, which implies that wages are going to go up because there are not very many people looking for jobs. So those that have jobs can ask for higher wages. Um, and this implies that you're going to have an increase in input costs that shifts short run aggregate supply to the left, in this case from SRAS to SRAS1, and you're back at full employment output at a new price level, P2. Okay, so there is the first long run, short run scenario with uh, regarding excess aggregate demand.